Hello, champions. It's Nicholas Cage. You're listening to The Vocal Minority with Nick and Steve. If I was to drink myself to death in a Las Vegas hotel room, I would definitely have this podcast on. And Elizabeth Shue. Definitely Elizabeth Shue. Actually, forget the show. I just want Elizabeth Shue. You and me both. Welcome to the podcast. It's The Vocal Minority with Nick and Steve. Thanks for joining us once again. Yeah, back in my younger days, that was one shoe I really wanted to fit into. You know what I mean? Yeah, me too, dude. All I could think about was Elizabeth's shoe. Oh. Hey, welcome to the show. It's the Vulcan Minority with Nick and Steve. I'm Steve. That guy over there is Nick. Yeah, uh, that's who I am. We've got a web page. You can go check that out. TheVocalMinority.net. All our socials are live and laughable. So go check them out. TikTok. YouTube, those are our big, big daddy canes. And then we've got, uh, oh, we've got threads. We're on Reddit. Uh, we're on Twitter or whatever. Leon Musk is calling that these days. Right. I'm getting ready to throw our Twitter page out a window. I just can't help but notice anytime we post anything anti Trump or specifically even anti Leon Musk, why, for some reason, it gets just no traction, no views whatsoever. Uh, We know Leon Musk is not only a douchebag, but he's also a liar, Steve. I mean, we've seen him lie constantly. In fact, I think that's kind of what he bases his platform off of. Yeah, I mean, that's really what Twitter has become. It's become his little political toy for him to try to put his thumb on the scale of politics and pop culture. And he's constantly admonishing the legacy media, as he calls them. But here's the difference between what the bullshit he's preaching and what the media does is that when the media gets something wrong, they print a retraction or the host goes on air and says, we got something wrong. That's how you know if you're a credible news outlet or not. You know, Fox News, I I don't, maybe they've retracted something somewhere. I mean, I know they retracted somewhat of that Dominion lawsuit after they got fined a billion dollars. Yeah, when they had to. Right, exactly. But, you know, uh, real news organizations will admit when they screwed up. And the the media world is peer-reviewed much like scientists, like other media outlets are always watching each other, trying to bust each other. And when it happens, the credible ones admit to it. The other ones just pretend like it didn't happen. And that's what Leon Musk is doing. He never goes out and publicly states like that was wrong information. Let me make sure the 1.2 billion people that saw the first lie see my retraction. Never has done it. Never will because he's a freaking liar. Yes, he's a piece of crap, and I don't want to come off and sound like an old man, like a get-off-my-lawn old man, but two things missing in America from my day and from your day. Uh, When people lie, their nose used to grow, dude. And we used to see, you could just tell when people are lying because their nose would grow. We also used to see pants on fire all the time when people would lie. (laughs) I mean, suddenly pants were on fire. I don't see any of it anymore. Yeah, these are the good old days. It's not just (laughs) Disney movies. This is what uh, really used to happen, kids. Nowadays, it's harder to tell when someone is lying. Right. Yeah, no igniting pants and no growing noses. Uh, But I'll tell you what, the importance of uh, truth-telling cannot be overstated. I found uh, a little article. goes over a list of things you should never lie about because... Hey, let's be real with each other. Everyone tells a white lie for good every now and again to protect somebody or, you know, what I'm saying? Sure, sure. Sometimes stories are a little bit better if you sculpt things slightly, but flat out lies. I don't know how many of those I really slip into my daily world. I will say that a good indication that Trump is lying to you is if his lips are moving. Yes, his butt lips or or his human head lips, right? And I'm hearing more and more people talk about the funk that is around that man, that just vile stench that emanates off of him. Part of it is definitely because he craps his pants all the time. Right. Every time he lies, he craps his pants. Uh, So these are things that uh, professionals, uh, Dennis Michael wrote this article, a psychiatrist, okay? Uh, These are things you should never lie about because it's just not good for you. It's just not good for the other person. One of them, maybe you can speak to this. This is uh, physical appearance for online dating. He says it's tempting to present an uh, idolized version of yourself online. However, misrepresenting your appearance can lead to disappointment and broken trust immediately. 
I mean, you're setting yourself up to fail, especially if you're looking for an actual relationship. If it's some Tinder hookup, maybe the the other person will be desperate enough that they won't care. But there's a, there's a woman that um, I follow somewhat casually online. Her name is Emily King. She's a female relationship coach, but her advice tends to lean towards the male-friendly side. In other words, women, you're being a little harsh on your guys. A lot of women give up good men. And she's trying to point out, like, if your guy's doing these things, like, he's actually a good guy. One of the things she does is when people post videos about dating or whatever, she'll comment on them. And this one woman had posted a video about that, that I used Instagram filters on Mm. my dating profile pictures. And when I showed up in person, the guy was like, oof, boy, you've got some acne and some chicken pox scars. And... And he just told her, like, I'm not even interested. I'm done. I'm walking away from this date. Your face looks like a butt, and I can't take it, (laughs) you know? And this woman was ranting as far as, like, how dare he? How shallow? Who cares if I put a little filter on? Like, isn't that what makeup does anyways? And and Emily King had the guy's back and said, women, like, if, if you're filtering your pictures, you are lying about your appearance, and you're setting yourself up for this exact scenario. Your skin is not as pure as your picture. So all of a sudden, if a guy's not attracted to you, it's kind of your fault for lying to him. And when you say, uh, like, who cares, you know, if I have a little bit of this, obviously you do, or you wouldn't have put the filter on. I mean, you care about it yourself. So uh, there's a person out there for everybody. And some people are not only uh, don't mind a little acne, some people are attracted to it. I'm telling you, there is someone for everyone. So just be yourself. Absolutely. And again, I don't know why you'd want to set yourself up to fail. Uh, And that's not to say you obviously don't pick flattering pictures of yourself, but they should actually be of you. Just that the lighting is good doesn't (laughs) mean that, you know, you're taking the picture. Like, so yeah, there's, there's something to that. I will tell you, uh, Kennedy, uh, I think she told me this when we first met, but it kind of went in one ear and out the other, but she recently reiterated to me. She told me that I was on her first date. She thought that I was better looking in person than I was in my pictures. Wow. That's, uh, you know, uh, maybe only also because she could see a little bit of your personality uh, and movement. I mean, it's real life. So, yeah, I get that. You can't hear my voice in those pictures. So I think that's what sealed the deal. So. It's a freaking panty dropper, dude. You know, it's what it is. Yeah. But, yeah, don't lie about your pictures. No, I can see why it would be tempting so easy now. But, uh, yeah, you're just uh, setting yourself up for failure 90% of the time. These are things you should never lie about. Uh, Credentials and work experience. Lying about your qualifications can have serious repercussions. Employers rely on accurate information to make hiring decisions, and misrepresenting your qualifications can damage your professional reputation and result in job loss. I don't know if I 100% agree with this one. I was going to say, there's a little nuance to this one. It's so common that people lie on their resume, and most of you will get away with it because the employer will sometimes, and I'm saying only sometimes, call the references that you list. They will almost never call any of those old companies you list on your resume. So I don't want to give you a, an excuse to get away with lying for it, but I, I see why people do. And... You know, you don't want to tell someone you've got your pilot's license if you don't really. (laughs) You don't know how to fly a plane. Yeah, you shouldn't do it if you're trying to be, uh, you know, a doctor (laughs) or something like that. Uh, Again, you're setting yourself up to fail for some of these jobs. But, you know, if you just want to fudge about your marketing experience or your sales experience, if you think you can really do the job, then you're going to be okay. And, Nick, I think maybe I admitted to you this years ago, but on my original radio resume, I don't know if it was a lie, but I embellished a little bit. With? So here's the deal. I did an internship at a classic rock station in Detroit when I was still in broadcasting school. And over the course of that internship, I got into the programming department. I became a board op. Then they let me go on air for like 30 minutes at like 4 o'clock in the morning or something. But I was on air in Detroit, Michigan at the big classic rock station. Top 10 station, top 10 market. That's big stuff. Yeah. However, I was only on the air like little fractions of time in the middle of the night. But the program director at that station really took a liking to me. And he told me, I told him, I'm moving and I'm heading out across the country to try to find radio work. I'm going to start in Seattle. And he told me, he said, here's what you do, Steve. Put on your resume that you're a full-time disc jockey for WCSX Classic Rock Station in Detroit. When they call to check that, they're going to talk to me. I'm going to tell them that that is accurate because I know you're not going to embarrass me. 
I know you just need that leg up. And quite frankly, you could be a regular full-time jock here, even though you're not. So put it on your resume. I'll have your back. And that is spot on what got me that first job at KBSG. Heidi May called my old program director and told me, boy, that guy's saying your praises. That's awesome, dude. I, I don't think there's anything wrong with it. You know, people say uh, in a lot of instances, you can fake it till you make it. And that happens a lot in the the job world. And if somebody was willing to vouch for you, there's no reason to not put that on the resume just as they stated it. And technically, it was true. I mean, maybe you weren't full time on the air, but uh, potato, potato. <laughs> well, like you he know? said, I know you're not going to embarrass us. So that would be the key. If I just lied about being a radio DJ and the first time I opened the mic, it's just a disaster. That'd be bad for me. It'd be bad for everyone. But yeah, the guy knew I could do it. So he told me, go ahead and uh, fudge the facts a little bit. Yeah. No, that's uh, that's how you get jobs oftentimes. And I've been on the other side of that coin where someone has lied uh, at KBSG. Uh, I was in charge of hiring weekenders and overnighters and stuff like that. And I remember there was a lady, I'll call her Lou Failure, that she had uh, a hell of a resume. And when she got there for me to kind of train her for the overnights on the weekends, I had never heard anything like it. I mean, I was just like, none of what you wrote was true. That's interesting. Do you think she was really lying about her experience or just somehow, I don't know, faked her way through those jobs? Or Yeah, I don't know. I don't know, dude. I don't. But I know that there's people that are bad. And if you say, like, I've done all this stuff and I'm good at it and blah, blah, blah. And in radio, it's tough because you put forward an air check tape. And that is a tape that you submit to the radio station and they can listen to a couple of breaks from you. And Come on, dude. You can edit those. I mean, I know people that have spent hours on like a two minute clip of an air check to submit to radio stations. So it's polished. It's not live. And it's all we have to go off of. Yeah. And I would say some of those tactics may get you the job, but you're not going to keep the job if you don't have the skills to back it up. Completely. Uh, these are all things that you should never lie about. If you find yourself to be a liar, maybe you've come across a few of these, but, uh, I, w I wouldn't say, uh, these are things that will change your character because I've lied about some of this stuff and maybe I'm just justifying it to not be a douchebag. But, uh, the next one on the list is financial capability and well being. This one says financial honesty is important in both personal and professional settings. Misrepresenting your financial status can lead to mistrust and financial strain, which is so true. I mean, I think it's most important overall to be honest to yourself when it comes to your financial capability. Hmm. I have said a lot of things and then people tell me, boy, you're priceless. You are just priceless. And I'm like, I'm worth a lot of money is how I interpret that. So I always tell people that, oh, I, I am priceless. I, 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 my worth is very, very high. You it's couldn't afford me. Right. <laughs> no. But no, this is one of those few like adulting things that, um, you know, at some point you got to put your cards on the table and you could say I've saved for retirement. What does that mean? A hundred bucks, a million bucks, <laughs> like, you know, or, or I'm not paying my bills every month. Like when they get shut off, do you pay them? Do you pay them on time? Like, you know, there is some uh, some connection with financial maturity to your actual maturity. Yes, for sure. It's something you should be careful with because uh, you can only play uh, for a short time before you find yourself in a hole that is tough to get out of when you lie about your your finances, whether you're lying to a partner or lying to yourself, showing up to the club with you know, fake Rolexes on and acting like you're Mr. Big Stuff when you're not. Uh, it's a dangerous game, so yeah. don't lie. No, that's fair. Going over a list of things you should never lie about. This is talking about government compliance requests. Uh, that's a tough one to lie about because, well, you can go to prison. Or can you, Trump? Well, um, they catch me. That's right. This one says honesty with government compliance requests is a non-negotiable. Lying on official documents undermine the integrity of public systems and may lead to severe legal consequences. That's true. Well, it's extremely true. I don't even know what that gamble would be, uh, you know, worth taking over because most government things, you got to provide some sort of proof, <laughs> residency or income or whatever it is. And running a radio station, we are under the FCC's thumb and there's a million reports and filings and everything else I do. And 
you know, you're just setting yourself to be put out of business literally if you lie about any of it. So I don't know what the gain would be because they're going to find you eventually. I'll tell you, um, this was years and years ago. You know, I take a medication for my uh, multiple sclerosis that is very expensive. And I've been on several of them. Well, there was a time when I didn't have insurance for like a year. And I was trying to figure out a program how I could get take care of that medication so I could be on it. I'm talking, this is like $90,000 medication every six months. So it's not like two grand. You can kind of figure it out if you have to. But uh, I put in a request for the program and I started looking around and saying, oh, I wonder what the cap is on what you can make to get this program. And I found out what it was and we made more than that. So, I mean, I honestly did think like, do we divorce So, you know, I could just do this off my income for now and then we'll get remarried. Like some of those things like that people in America go through that, dude, like maybe we shouldn't be married. And that's uh, I guess it's a way to get around it. And it's not real honest, but I never did it. But I thought about it. Yeah, no, it's understandable. Speaking of marriage, I learned a fun fact a few years ago. There's no database that someone can look up to tell if you're married. So if you put on your taxes, I'm married filing jointly, they don't fact check that in any way. They can't. There's only a database to show if you've been divorced, not if you're actually married. What about you have to have a marriage license? Can't they look at that? So some things can require you to show proof. So they, an insurance company may say, show us that you're married if you're going to be on the same policy now. But that's, that's you providing the proof. They can ask you. There's no way for them to independently fact check that. And that could actually come into like real handy if, let's say, you know, your girlfriend's in the hospital and you go to the hospital and they say only, uh, you know, the husband can come back. Are you married? You can say yes. No one's no one can fact check that. They can never know that. And even if you want to say on your taxes, you're married to someone, they don't care if you are or not. You're you're filing jointly. So they just care if your math adds up. Marriage is one thing you can lie about. And it's really hard to ever get busted on. This program is not offering legal advice on anything you should put on your tax forms. Right. Now, why would you file jointly with some other person if you weren't actually married? I'm just saying there's no real way to actually fact check that. They can ask you to prove it, but they can't prove it without you. Can't they? uh, I mean, wherever I got my marriage license, isn't that on file that I have a marriage license? It's not publicly accessible in any way, shape or form, nor can any government agency. They would have to subpoena those records. Interesting. Hmm. All right. Well, good to know. Uh, Yeah, I'm not ever going to do any of those things, but it's good to know that you can if you need to. How did you find that out? I'm curious, you criminal. No, it was another criminal in our lives. So I won't get into the entire story, but my ex-wife, when we first got divorced, started dating a guy on parole for murder. Like, literally, that's not (laughs) that's not hyperbole. He was on a parole for murder. And his ex-wife, because he was married in prison and was going through divorce, hired a private investigator who showed up in my house to tell me all this stuff. And I asked him, like, are those two still married? Do we know if he even is divorced? And he explained to me, there is no database to prove if somebody is or isn't married. I can only access divorce records. So there's no way for me to prove that they ever were married. I can only prove that they're no longer married if they're divorced. Interesting. Yeah, no, that's crazy. You did go through that. I believe it now. Yeah. And if you Google it, you can't find that information on anyone. It's not publicly accessible. Uh, we're going over a list of things that you should never lie about. And the uh, next one is anything you tell your doctor. Uh, we talked about this on the podcast a few months back. And uh, I don't know who it benefits for you to lie to your doctor. Your health depends on the accuracy of information you provide to your doctor. And misleading your physician about your symptoms and history may result in incorrect diagnoses and ineffective treatment. Uh, we were talking about like, oh, yeah, some Sometimes when the doctor is like, have you weighed yourself lately and don't weigh you? I don't know. Maybe you give a couple of pounds lower and why, you know, it's they need all the information. So just give it to them for sure. I tried to lie to a nurse once, but it turns out she had a tape measure and the whole lie fell apart anyways. It's nothing to be ashamed about where you're still sitting seven ish, you know, eight ish. Yeah. Like I tried to claim nine, but whatever. <laughs> but, uh, no, I mean, you're right. Like lying to your doctor. The only scenarios I've ever done it are when they ask about, like, you know, marijuana use. Like for most visits, it's like, none of your business. It's got nothing to do with the flu I'm here over. So, no, I don't smoke pot. Uh, But otherwise, yeah, you're just making it harder for them to diagnose you. So I'm not sure what you'd be lying about. 
Yeah, uh, that should be an easy one. This is another one that well, I feel like you should know, but obviously a lot of people don't. We're talking about things you should never lie about. And this one uh, is anything you tell your lawyer. You know, your lawyer has a duty uh, to keep things privileged. Uh, it's a privileged conversation. So you should always tell your lawyer the truth. It's the best way for them to be able to uh, support you and get you off or, you know, whatever the case may be. Legal advice is only as good as the information provided. Lying to your lawyer can compromise your case and lead to unfavorable outcomes. Now, see, that's ironic because I was lying to the nurse because I was hoping she would get me off. No, this is a lawyer, Steve. This is a lawyer. Different thing. Uh, Yeah, you know, lawyers, and I don't know if this will show up on the list, but therapists are the only real categories out there that they cannot tell your secrets to anyone else. Privileged. Yes, it's privileged, unless they know you're going to go commit a crime, specifically murder. Like, then they have an obligation to narc on you. But just be smart enough not to admit to a future murder with your therapist or your lawyer. But otherwise... I have a therapist. I have way too many lawyers. And there's a certain sense of freedom that I can tell you whatever I want to because you can't ever narc on me. And there has been times with my lawyer, I'm like, stop me if I'm telling you something illegal, but here's the way I did this. <laughs> you know, I want an honest answer. So I'm going to give you the honest what I did. You know, Shake your head. If like, a, no, I don't need to know that. Don't, you don't need to tell me anything about that. Right. Uh, the therapist is a weird one, dude. Um, I didn't do therapy until late adulthood like I, I i just didn't do it when i was a teenager or even into my 20s or young 30s i think there's this thing that some people experience and not all of us but you want your therapist to like you is that a thing for you yes yeah, yeah i mean there there are confidence levels and yeah you don't want to paint yourself to look stupid or dumb or whatever but you don't understand what one admission may lead to because they may go, oh, wow, you're lying about your weight. When did you first feel like you were over? Well, my mom used to always tell me I was overweight. Like, oh, now we're getting to the root of some issues. Like, it's it's better to just be honest. Completely. Uh, I always know that my therapist told me more than once, and I like to hear this, and I don't know that she knows that, but when we wrap up our sessions, she says something to the effect of it's always enjoyable to talk to you, you know, or something like that. I bet uh, you and I are good patients, good clients for therapists. We're, we're articulate. We know how to make a good story. We make our points. We don't wander and drift for an hour. You know. Yeah, that's that's probably true. These are things you should never lie about, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to the podcast. Uh, Feeling sick at work? Pretending to be ill to skip work might seem harmless, but it undermines workplace trust. It can also put undue strain on your colleagues. So don't ever lie about feeling sick at work. True or false? balls i mean come on <laughs> some of us don't want to bring vacation days for everything and what's with this american five-day work week you're burning us out good god so listen you can, it's just like you know you, you only have so many sick days you can only use that excuse so often but sometimes it's for the greater good to just say listen i'm not well today whether it's because you're interviewing somewhere else or you just need a mental health day it's what's going to keep you from not going to work and exploding on everybody like there's some wiggle room there come on That's been a little controversial over the last 10 years of people uh, saying, oh, yeah, I need a mental day. I need a mental break. Like, that's something that we shouldn't be able to take. Uh, I mean, as long as it's not abused, if you actually need a mental day, then you should be able to take it. That's a type of sickness. And most real companies have actual sick days. So you can only burn those excuses so many times. You're going to run out of sick days, and then you're just shooting yourself in the foot. Yeah. But, you know, if you work for a mom and pop shop, like, you know, the radio station we're at, like, I don't keep track of anyone's sick days. There's a latitude I give to everyone. But, yeah, sometimes it's, it's okay to fake sick. I think so, too. I put, I put the thermometer on the light bulb when I was a kid. If I can lie to my mom about being sick, I'm going to lie about it to my work, you know. You know, it's so funny, dude. One time when I was, I think, middle schoolish, I tried to fake being sick. And so I put the thermometer on a light bulb. <laughs> This was an old school glass thermometer with mercury inside of it. That thing exploded the mercury oh. out the other end. I kept it on the light bulb so long that it shattered and mercury went everywhere. Holy crap, dude. That could make you very ill. Right. So to cover up the fact that I destroyed the thermometer, I told my mom that I accidentally bit it and I swallowed the mercury. 
God, did you go to the hospital? Oh my God, my mom freaked out. She immediately called poison control and was like, my son swallowed mercury. And I'm sitting there going, is mercury poisonous? Should I not? Have said that <laughs> that oh is hysterical, God. dude. Does she know that story now? I don't know if she does. I should probably play her this segment. But thankfully, the poison control told her there's not enough mercury in her thermometer to poison him. But if he starts vomiting or blah, 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 take him to the emergency room. But wow. you know, so I had this moment of faking sickness where I almost got myself checked into a hospital. <laughs> <laughs> uh, these are all things that you're not supposed to ever lie about. Your relationship status being next on the list. Uh, if you do that, that'll lead to complicated situations. Misrepresentation can hurt all parties involved and lead to emotional distress. You should be uh, have a little transparency in relationships. That's essential for trust and respect, blah, blah, blah. Of course, you should never lie about your relationship status. To, I'm confused. To rely to who? To your person or someone else saying you're single and you're really not? Yeah, maybe just like, oh, hey, we're, uh, the boys are out tonight. Take off the wedding ring or tell, you know, I'm not married. I don't have a girlfriend. I mean, of course you shouldn't lie about that, dude. That's a no-brainer. Yes, that seems very obvious. Dave Grohl, are you listening? <laughs> right. I will say, so on my on Facebook, I have my own actual Facebook page that, that is for people I really know in real life. Yeah. Then I have a DJ Facebook page, and it's my same name because I use my real name on the radio. But anyone, because I get friend requests a lot from listeners, and I don't want them on my real page. So I always uh, direct them over to my fan page, as I call it. Sure. And years ago, as a joke, I put on my fan page that my relationship status was complicated. <laughs> it was a joke about me and radio and my relationship with radio. I did that back when I was married still. And then fast forward years, I'm divorced, I'm out dating. Some woman found that page, saw that my relationship status was complicated and accused me of still being married or cheating on her or something. And I was like, it was a joke. It's not even my real page. That's fantastic. <laughs> so well, it screwed you. You should never lie about that stuff, Steve. Exactly. So, yes. uh, you've had an experience with this one, too, being in the dating world. I know you've seen it uh, and been a part of it. Not that you did it, but you've had it done to you. These are things you should never lie about. And this one is your age. Misrepresentation on your age can lead to trust issues as well. And in dire cases, legal complications. Honesty about your age is vital for social situations and official documentation. Yeah, thank God I was never on a dating app when I was like 19 or something and some woman's lying about her age, you know. That yeah. Be really complicated. But uh, yeah, I did. Um, there was a couple examples of this. When I first started dating, we interviewed a dating coach on the show and she was auditing my my bio. To try yeah. To work better. The first question she asked me was, are you really 47? Because I was at the time. And I asked her, like, why, why do I not look at or something? And she was like, no, it's got nothing to do with that. It's the number one thing people lie about in their dating profile. Okay. But, uh, I mean, that's odd because it will, if you have a relationship with this person, it's going to create some sort of tough conversations and complications. Absolutely. We famously on the show talked about the fact I was dating a woman who told me she was our age. She said she was 48, but she was really 52. And I don't give a crap if you're four years older than me. The fact that I caught her lying about it, that's what was weird. And whatever yeah. mental hurdle she had that if I say I'm over 50, I'm going to look old or something, like you just unnecessarily complicated things. And if you have to lie about your age, uh, you're looking for the wrong person. I mean, don't you want someone who doesn't care that you're 52 and not 47? Like, that's a shallow person. So, yeah, it's just I don't see. And like you said, sometimes people are on dating websites for hookups. Maybe you're on it for there. I suppose you shouldn't lie about your age for hookups either, though. That could be dangerous. <laughs> Again, if it's an under 18 thing, yeah, for sure. But no, you're setting yourself up to fail. And I'll tell you, in my marriage, um, Jamie and I were dating for six months or something. And she came to me one day with tears in her eyes that I have a confession to make to you. Uh, she said, I, I lied to you about my age. Uh, she told me she was 21 and she was really 20 when we first met. Did you guys ever go to a bar? Yes. And she had a fake ID. Wow. But the problem was six months later into the relationship, her 21st birthday was coming up and she wanted to be able to celebrate her 21st birthday. So she had to admit to me, like, I lied to you about my age. I was really only 20. And 
I will tell you, at the time, I kind of laughed it off as like, who gives a crap? Like, you're six months older than you said or younger than you said. But, right. You know, it, it, it's sort of indicative because then that set up a 20-year run of little white lies. Lies that she told that she didn't think were affecting anyone in the long term. And when you pile up a, a molehill of all those lies, obviously, you're living proof of it. That does create issues. Yeah. So it may not be the specific lie that you should worry about. It's the fact that they lied about anything. And then what else would they lie about? Right. This is another one that goes into relationships as we go over a list of things you should never lie about. This one says, don't lie about feelings to your partner. Honest communication is vital to understanding and resolving any issues with your partner. It fosters deeper emotional connections and mutual respect, which is so true, dude. I mean... I'm not saying that as soon as you feel something, you should jump on it. Be like, hey, I want to tell you about this. But uh, if you're feeling a certain type of way, you should definitely communicate that to your partner. What if I'm on a first date and I'm feeling horny? Should I be communicating that? Uh, Maybe at 10 or 11 o'clock, but not at 8 o'clock. You know, I don't think you should tell him you're horny. So there are exceptions, you're saying. I'm just saying, like, you should be honest about your feelings, and sometimes it's okay to wait. If I feel something on Thursday and I don't tell her until Saturday, that's okay. But if I keep it from her for six months and I'm just uh, collecting resentment over it, that's no good, right? For sure. But you know who it's even more dangerous to lie to about your feelings? Who? You. Yourself. Ah, wow. That's profound. That's, That's profound, dude. And a lot of people do it. I was doing it. There were many times with the Hindenburg where we would get in an argument and I would think to myself, like, I feel like I might be with the meanest person on the planet. And I just kept convincing myself that can't possibly be accurate. It turned out to be pretty accurate, though. So (laughs) lying to myself did it really no good for anyone involved, especially me. Yeah, that's true, dude. I mean, we definitely can lie to ourselves, whether it's just for, like, self-preservation in the moment or, you know, trying to figure out that that person that at one time made me feel great things is now not making me feel that great anymore. It'd be hard to listen to yourself say that, you know? Yeah. Otherwise, of course, you should be honest with your person about your feelings. You're, you're just painting yourself into a corner. Otherwise, you should still pick your battles. But yeah, you know, feelings aren't wrong. So why lie about them? That's right. Oh, this is funny, dude, because I've done this, and I'm sure you've done it, too. Uh, These are things you should never lie about. This is something you do not know. Uh, I've been at a party before where it's just easier for me to, oh, oh, you know that movie, uh, Spaceballs. You ever seen that? And you've seen that, right? And I'll be like, oh, yeah, Spaceballs. That's funny, right? You've had a lie like that? Yes, absolutely. Uh, This is refrain from pretending to know something you don't as it can lead to misinformation and mistakes. Admitting ignorance allows for growth, learning, and continuous improvement. There's been a few scenarios like that where someone's like, you ever see a Requiem for a Dream? I'm like, yeah, yeah, no, I'm pretty sure I saw that. (laughs) Well, what'd you think of Leonardo DiCaprio's performance? I was like, oh, it was really good. And then they're like, oh, wait a minute. No, that was Matt Dillon, not uh, Leo. Like, how did you think that? I'm like, now I'm just completely, I'm, I'm doubling and tripling down on the lies here. Oh, was it Matt Dillon? Oh, you're right. You're right. I don't know how I got that mixed up, too. Yeah, that's funny. Uh, we've all been a part of that kind of stuff. And I suppose I don't see how it's really dangerous. But uh, for little lies that you just want to go along with the conversation because you'd like it to be over sooner than later. I think that that's pretty innocuous. Yeah. And I'll tell you, being somewhat hard of hearing, you know, I was in a rock band for years and I've been to way too many concerts. I have tinnitus. And there's a lot of times where I'm in a public setting. If there's background noise, I really have a hard time hearing every word someone says. And there's been multiple times where somebody (laughs) says something to me, I can't pick up on it all. So I just sort of give a generic head nod, like, "Mm, yep, yep, yep. And sometimes people are like, what do you mean, yes, yes, yes? Or what's the answer? I just asked you. I'm like, (laughs) and now I have this panic moment of like, I have no idea what you said. So I'm just like, I I, I try to double down. I'm like, oh, yeah, no, I I hear hear you. You've all been there, right? I mean, come on. Like, but there's times where someone, it becomes completely obvious I didn't hear a word you said. And now I look like a fool for trying to lie my way out of it. That's so funny, dude. Uh, Yeah, we've all been there before. Uh, These are things you should never lie about. This one is needing help. That's true. I have a hard time asking for help. 
help, whether it's emotional help from outside of my immediate circle or even inside. This says pride often prevents people from asking for help. However, honesty about your struggle can lead to valuable support and solutions. I will tell you this, that... um, Oh, oftentimes we learn in life by people we respect and care about modeling behavior. And you are a person that uh, has been vulnerable and asked for help in times that were very appropriate. And, uh, but I felt like it took courage to ask for that help. So it's enlightened me a little bit that, like, of course, it's OK to ask for help. I would want them to ask me for help. Yeah, uh, there was a. Uh, there's been a couple of times in my life, but particularly a few years ago, during a terrible breakup, where I didn't want to ask for help. I just felt like I was going to put too much burden on you or anyone else, and I just didn't want to ask for help. And my therapist was the one that told me, like, if Nick was standing here next to you right now as you're going through this, would this be easier for you? And I said, yes, of course it would be. So she's like, why? Why would you not ask for help then? You're defeating yourself. You're de- defeating the help that Nick could be offering you. Like, suck it up and ask for some help already. Yes. Yeah, I, I completely agree. But I do not want to understate sometimes the courage it takes because even for the same reasons, like, I don't want to burden anyone else with that. Well, there's times you shouldn't ask for help all the time but if you need help you should ask for it and i would want you to right so people must want me to ask for help if i really need it i think this goes back to the other thing i was saying about lying to yourself because that's that's really what prevents you from asking for help you're lying to yourself that you don't really need it or it's too much of a burden for someone else so that isn't lying about needing help i think you're lying to yourself yeah, I'll tell you, there was a time I told a woman that a rattlesnake just bit my dick. Can you please suck the poison out? <laughs> what kind of help you're asking for, <laughs> right? Maybe that's not an appropriate way to lie about help. So maybe you said <laughs> so. Yeah, I mean, you should still try it once in a while. It was a victimless lie. Everyone seemed happy when it was over. So I don't right. Know. You should ask Katy Perry, clean the kitchen, ask Katy Perry. She would have give you a good answer. Right. Uh, These are things you should never lie about. Uh, Harassment or abuse. Boy, is that true. And I guess it maybe it goes without stating that. But lying about harassment or abuse, it can have devastating consequences. Uh, So, yeah, I mean, anytime someone is facing harassment or abuse, whether it's mental or physical, like you should never lie about that, that everything's okay. You know, everything's okay. And a lot of people do. Again, it's courageous to do it because it's embarrassing. I get it. Now, see, I took that the other way. Not that you wouldn't be lying to yourself about harassment or I'm not being abused. This is okay. You can't go lie to other people that you're being abused or harassed. You can't tell a cop or a judge, my, 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 you know, my boyfriend just hit me. Like the gone girl thing. I, it, it diminishes the people that really are needing of help, really are being abused because we want to believe everyone in the Me Too movement that if you're going to take the effort to confess that somebody's done something terrible to you, of course we should believe you. But there are some gone girls out there that fuck it up for everyone because you go and lie, and then now no one, now everyone looks at everyone skeptically, and you don't want that for someone who's truly a victim. Yep, 100%. Uh, I didn't even look at it that way, but that is so true. I guess just lying in general about harassment or abuse is, uh, you know, it's a bad, bad thing. It's a bad, bad thing. Ba-doom, ba-doom, boom, boom. <laughs> a classic hit. Well, Steve, that uh, concludes my article of Liar, Liar, Pants on Fire. Uh, I feel like I've learned a few things today. Well, good. I have an article that ties in perfectly with this. Just happenstance. Good. It's just sitting around. (laughs) So the question is, how do you know if someone's lying to you? Because you always want to give them the benefit of the doubt, especially if it's like a a love interest or a family member. Yeah, for sure, dude. I mean, there are some telltale signs. Uh, Do they not look at you in the eye? Uh, Are their palms sweaty? Is their penis erect? You know, is their heart beating? I mean, penis erect is, they're probably lying to you (laughs) a little bit. Or like we said with Trump, if his lips are moving, he's probably lying. These may be obvious indications. But this article points out body language clues that somebody is lying to you. The first one on the list, Nick, the eyes. The eyes. Ah. Someone who's lying might blink more rapidly than usual, a subconscious response to stress. Uh, to stress. Alternatively, they may avoid eye contact with you altogether. 
Interesting. I mean, uh, that's the old salesman trick that uh, if you're going to lie to somebody, just look at their forehead. I mean, it looks like you're looking at them in the eye and you don't have to actually take any accountability to their soul. So that's how to lie. Here's a good field test for everyone to do. My grandfather told me this eons ago, and over the course of my life, I have found it to be accurate. He always told me, when you shake someone's hand, make eye contact with them. If someone shakes your hand and will not make eye contact with you, they're a liar. Really? All right. I'll try that. Most Uh, humans instinctively make eye contact with each other because you're greeting each other. But there have been a few people that I have noticed, like they didn't make eye contact with me. And eventually that person comes out to be a liar or a bad person. I wonder if uh, Trump made eye contact with Kamala when she shook his hand at the debate. It would be interesting to know. That would be. I don't know if there's any good zoom in camera angle on that or something, but yeah. Make sure you make eye contact, which now I'm giving sociopaths and liars a way to trick people into thinking they're being honest by by consciously making eye contact. But yeah, it's a good little, it's a good indicator. Yes, indeed. Uh, fidgety fingers, body language tips that you know someone is not being honest with you. Uh, nervous energy often manifests in someone's hands. A person who's not being truthful might touch their face a lot. I've heard that one a lot, uh, especially around the mouth or nose. It's because they're subconsciously trying to cover up a lie by trying to hide them. (laughs) Really? That's interesting. Mm -hmm. Uh, Yeah, you are kind of giving a class on how to lie to people right now uh, and not get caught. Uh, But I'm trying to think, um, not that I lie a lot, but when I do lie, I, I don't think I would ever touch my face like that, trying to cover it up. I think I'm a good liar, to be honest with you. <laughs> that could be. I mean, you and I talk with our hands a lot, just being in public speaking and on the radio. I mean, people watching any of these podcast clips will will see we do speak with our hands a lot. But that's different than being fidgety and nervous or covering up your mouth or touching your face when you're lying. Like those, those are uh, a lot of psychologists will tell you, or a lot of profilers will tell you that that is a classic indication. Right. Yeah, it makes sense to cover up the lie. I'll cover my mouth. Mm-hmm. Uh, Another body language thing that tells you someone might be lying, uh, they call it the freeze response. When the body goes still, the lies might uh, be flowing. Uh, When some people fidget when lying, others might become unusually still, almost frozen. This can be a sign of heightened focus as they concentrate on maintaining their story. Isn't that interesting? Yeah, for sure. Uh, But it's tough because whether you fidget or you're still, you're a liar, you know, so it's hard to tell. Uh, I guess you would know, like, I understand what you're saying about being still almost like a deer in headlights, like, oh, I got to process this quickly and get out of this. Yeah. I, I guess it's the happy medium. If somebody's overly fidgety or just paralyzed, that probably something is up because normal people have some, you know, in between wiggle room there. Yeah, I have the greatest. I, I I don't know if I want to say it because it's probably on the list. Do you want me to say it or not say it? Go ahead and say it, and then we'll see if it comes up. Uh, I always think that it's funny for people when, oh, let's say I accuse you of, like, you cheated on me at the rock concert last Thursday. I cheated mm-hmm. on you at the rock concert last Thursday? Like, uh, oh, they repeat, the the, repeat the question just because I need a little time to think about what I'm going to tell you. Yes, that is a classic lying response. Now, I don't know if that would qualify as a body language like this article is highlighting, but yeah, people that repeat the question back, they're either lying or yeah, they're trying to buy time to come up with some intelligent response, which could mean they're lying or could just mean you've stumped them. Sometimes when I'm watching those cop videos, you know, uh, sometimes a perpetrator, every, he, they repeat every sentence. I did that? You're saying I did that? you know, repeat everything that they say. And it's obvious that they're trying to stall for time to think about the lie. Yeah. I've been told, and this is again, not a body language thing per se, but if someone ever like a narcissist or somebody tells you some egregious lie or something, ask them to repeat it. I didn't hear what you said. Can you repeat that? People have some uh, subconscious urge to not repeat a lie. They feel like they're now being focused on or called out. So if they won't repeat what they just said to you, they're either trying to gaslight you or they're lying to you. That's interesting. I'm going to try that one, dude, for sure. That's a, that's a great technique. Mm -hmm. I've also noticed, I think I've read this somewhere, but I've noticed in just my life, if somebody's trying to lie to you, they give a very detailed answer. 
if you come home late and your wife's like, where you been? You're like, I stopped at the grocery store. And that's all you say. You're telling the truth. If you're like, well, I got a call from Nick and he really needed this specific type of cereal. So I went to the store. They didn't have the cereal. Oh my gosh. And the clerk just stopped like, that's a lot of detail. <laughs> you might be lying. Too many details. You're already trying to prove it to me right. when it could just be a simple. Yeah. I, oh, I stopped at the store. Right. Because subconsciously, you're trying to prove your lie. If it's not a lie, you don't feel the need to put all these details in. Yeah, completely. That's a good one. Uh, How about vocal variations? They're calling this a body language thing that people may be an indication they're lying to you. Uh, The voice can betray even the most practiced liar. A higher pitch might indicate stress while speaking more slowly could suggest they are carefully constructing their story as they're lying. Yeah, I think that if you're telling the truth, we would just talk like we always talk. I mean, I wouldn't be like, I I didn't go anywhere. I didn't do anything. I swear. It's tough for us, though. We're trained to have, I don't know, a lot of ups and downs in our voices. Little inflection to paint the picture. Yeah, I mean, literally in broadcasting school, they talked about that, that a bad on-air person just has one sort of flat pitch. And it's an easy trick to sound conversational to slow it down a little bit here and there and then take it up a notch a little bit and then go back to your normal pace and then slow down to emphasis. And like, <laughs> just on there. like, I'm trying to be a good speaker, but they're saying it's an indication of lying. So. Yeah, well... Oh, you got to be careful. But, you know, for the most part, when we talk to our like significant others or friends, I mean, unless we're telling a story, which I may be lying about some of the details for entertainment purposes only, like we're pretty straightforward with our with our speech, you know. Well, we're good, phenomenal people. So that's why. Always have been, always will. Right. Uh, body language clues that someone isn't being honest. This is a good one that I have noticed. The barrier. Watch for someone suddenly crossing their arms or holding an object in front of their chest. Now, there's been a few women where we're in some sort of argument and on the couch, they put a pillow in front of their chest and they kind of hold the pillow there. Uh, I always thought that was like uh, uh, teddy bears just not around. (laughs) You know, like I just want to feel safe a little bit or whatever. But if you are comparing it to you crossing your arms, that's trying to close you off a little bit, right? Yes. Or if you're having a talk in the kitchen and they walk around the other side of the counter, they're putting some sort of barrier in between the two of you. It's an indication they're probably not being honest with you. Interesting. Uh, I can't, uh, I mean, so many of these things are Trump worthy, but how many times have you seen him with his hands tucked in his armpits, arms across his, you know, squeezing, you know? Oh, yeah. He, so, yeah, I, I think that is a good indication that someone's lying. Not always, but it's a good indication. Uh, Yeah, I mean, none of this is guaranteed. These are uh, indications, you know. It'd be funny if someone went home and was like, your voice is a little higher. (laughs) You are a lying bitch, you know. Yeah, you should probably look for several of these things all at once, and that would be a good indication. Well, it's at least a good indication to go fact check it, follow it up. Maybe not in that moment, but make a mental note that the story may not be accurate, and then go see what you can find out. Yeah, for sure. Uh, How about this one? Uh, Again, body language clues that someone isn't being honest. Micro expressions. Uh, These are lightning fast expressions that can reveal the true feeling before a person has time to control their face. A brief flash of anger, fear, or disgust that doesn't match their words could indicate that there's something more going on with the story. Mm, Give me an example, dude. I think it would be if you say, yeah, hey, why are you late today? I'm like, I was at the grocery store. I mean, uh, I just needed to pick up some bread. Like, if my immediate response is some sort of like, you know, I say it quick or I have some aggression built in there before I realize, like, you sound angry. Take it down a notch. Right. Yeah. She was just asking where I've been. Right. Yeah, that's funny. If they put uh, a face at your head as they're answering, these might be patients. <laughs> <laughs> it's at the fucking store. <laughs> that's a good one, though. I've never heard of that, though. Micro expressions. Somebody may not be able to control their emotions as they start to lie. So pay attention. A lying should make you nervous, right? I mean, for good people, I would think that lying makes you nervous because you're not supposed to do it. You know you're being dishonest. So, yeah, it should make you kind of feel like I'm doing the wrong thing here. Uh, I guess that's what a sociopath is, someone who could just lie and be very good at it and not have any signs. Yeah, it's the old Seinfeld thing, I think. It was Costanza that, you know, if you believe the lie, it's not a lie. 
That's true. I think that's true. <laughs> I, think I believe that's how that. Sociopaths and people like Trump get away with a lot of this stuff. They actually believe the lie, which is just an even deeper indication they're a flawed person. But that can be tough. If they believe it, they're probably not going to show you any of these signs. Yeah, but you, know, you just made a great point. Remember when Trump was called out on the lie for cats and dogs and he did immediately like show a little microaggression like I saw it on TV. <laughs> you know, he knows he didn't see that on TV and he had a little microaggression there. Yeah, that's a very good indication. You're right. How about this one? Body language that may show you're not being honest. Uh, the, the title is The Feet Don't Lie. Our feet often reveal our true intentions. If someone's feet are pointed towards an exit, they might be subconsciously expressing a desire to leave the situation. Or increased foot movement or wrapping their feet around chair legs can also indicate discomfort or anxiety. Hmm. As you're reading it, I'm trying to think if I've ever seen the behavior. And not that I could grasp it onto, but it's definitely something I'm going to watch out for because that would be a great indicator. Yeah, that's interesting. I did hear someone say once somebody's body is pointing towards the door when you're talking to them, that that might be an indication they're lying. So I guess that would be the same principle, because if your feet are pointing towards the door, obviously most of your body is going to be too. It's that fight or flight thing, and they're trying to fly because they're lying to you. They just want to get away from the situation. Yeah, that's yeah. a good indicator. Uh, how about this one? Uh, repetitive behaviors. Repeating questions, ah, there you go, repeating questions before answering, using the same phrase multiple times or reiterating how honest they are. Well, to tell you the truth, blah, 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 blah. So there you go. You're on it. Yeah, I was on it. That's a pretty easy one. I, I, I bet a lot of people got that. But also, yeah, they do repeat that statement a lot, but also having to say, like, I don't lie, dude. I'm not a liar. I don't lie. Like, if you know me, you should know, like, I'm not a liar. I shouldn't have to defend myself in that way. Yeah. No, that's really interesting. To, well, to tell you the truth, uh, this is real psychological mastery because, I don't know, there's times I've told people stories of, like, why would I be lying about this story? Like, why would I even be telling you the story if I didn't really, you know, whatever, you know, meet Chris Cornell or something? Like, <laughs> right. But I don't know. I guess a liar would tell you they're not lying. It's like the, the guy that says they're a good guy. The bad guy would tell you that. So you really... It all gets painted into a corner so easy. It's funny, dude, because you know, uh, you know, as a broadcast professional, what a crutch is, right? Where like, oh, I'll listen back to my tapes of being on the air, and I always say this particular phrase, or this is how I transition from one thing to another. It's a crutch. It happens all the time. I rely on it, and it's weak. I do notice for myself that I have a crutch if I'm about to lie to the audience for entertainment purposes like if I'm about to tell you like this is a phenomenon this is crazy crazy things are happening I'll always say like uh, to be honest with you I'm gonna be real honest with you right now <laughs> and started out with that because I'm setting up a lie and that happened I didn't mean to do it that way, but I noticed it in myself. Every time I intentionally lie, I always say, I'm going to be honest with you right now. Interesting. Hmm. Yeah, a lot of, yeah, a lot of psychology going on here. And Trump often does say stuff like that. Like, why yes. would I lie about this? Or people are telling me it's the truth. Like, it's true. Yes, completely. How about this one? Uh, body language clues that show you're not being honest. Uh, distancing language. Liars often subconsciously try to distance themselves from their deception. They might use a passive voice. Uh, mistakes were made, or I made a mistake. Avoid using I statements or speaking in vague terms that give specific details. Huh, interesting. Can I have an example? I don't quite understand. I think it would be like saying um, January 6th. Trump would say he didn't call for that. Um you know, uh, mistakes were made, like Nancy Pelosi didn't call in the troops, or mistakes were made. They misinterpreted what I said. If you're, uh, if you're trying to point the finger elsewhere, distancing yourself from it. In other I words, see. like, well, I wasn't there when this all started, or I don't know what they did when I left the office.